Steve, Ryan, congratulations. You have forged your way into the final round of this competition. In the first two rounds, you came to our forge and used our tools and equipment to forge signature blades out of salvaged steel. Now we're sending you back to your home forges where you will recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the charret. The history of the charret sword is deeply tied to the violent history of the Khyber Pass, which separates Afghanistan and Pakistan. The sharp, single-edged blade was a key asset of the Afridi tribe. The charret had devastating consequences for the Afridi's enemies because it could pierce through armor. The distinctive T-shape of the spine gives extra strength to the charret's razor-sharp blade. Good luck, bladesmiths. It feels great being back here in nice sunny Jacksonville, Florida. My day one goal is to actually get this blade forged. The only thing I'm really concerned about is getting the T-back of the spine correct. I'm going to create this T-spine by forging in fuller grooves. Getting that correct is very crucial. Not good. The problem is I put a little bit too much pressure and it looks like it's squished through. It's too thin and I got a little bit of daylight showing in there, so I am gonna have to start over. Uh, I was able to finish up the layering. Uh, I got the overall dimensions forged out, but uh, I've never forged a T into a spine before. If I was in an Afghan desert, this is probably how I would have to do this. So uh, I drew everything over length and then uh, just started to upset that spine, bringing it out in the shape of a T. I think it's working great. I mean, a nice even T there. Went way quicker than I thought it would. It allowed me to get to the quench today. Seems like everything went well, but as I was trying to pull it out. Boom. After yesterday having to trash my blade, I really need to get this blade done today. So far, so good. Looking pretty awesome. Forging in this T-joint is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So today, I'm using my other option, which is the grinding wheel. This is very crucial. I really can't afford to have to do this blade over again. As I'm grinding in the tea, I notice that it's standing out way better than I ever thought. I can control it a lot better. Everything's getting a lot lighter. And I am very happy at this point. When I was quenching, obviously, the blade fell. But I got lucky. Everything's fine. So I'd like to get through some testing early this morning. Failure during testing here would give me only 14, 15 hours to build a complete char A. So I don't need a failure here. Oh, yeah. Ate that up, absolutely no problem. <laughs> This blade looks extremely sexy. Now I'm just going to concentrate on doing my handle scales, inlays, cleaning up the blade a lot more. And I decided that I want to carve a wolf head in the front of it just to kind of set it apart, make it stand out. My wolf looks badass. The blade's sharp, the blade's strong. It's time to test it. All right, here we go. Pretty good. There's no edge damage or anything. Just bring it on, man. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> awesome. Bladesmiths, the charade was a weapon known to be light, fast, and sharp. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon can do, I will take your charade and deliver slashes and stabs on this ballistics dummy. Steve, you're up first. You ready? Absolutely. Let's do this.
Wow. <laughs> well, Steve, I like the Damascus pattern. And overall, it's got a great fit and finish. Your edge definitely lacerated. It even cut into the rib. On the slash, it lacerates and has a deep thrust. It allows me to disembowel this ballistics dummy. Your blade, sir, will kill. Thank you. Ryan, you're next. You ready? Yeah, man. Well, Ryan, let's talk about your blade. For Cherie, it is heavy, but it's sharp enough to lacerate and dig in, and the thrust allows for the laceration out. Your blade, sir, will kill. All right, gentlemen, now to test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting through these racks of sugar cane, forehand and backhand. What I want to see is a clean cut with very little resistance to that blade. Steve, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. OK. All right, well, it felt good cutting with this. You can see these first cuts very clean. The second cut, I kind of blew through this one. You can actually see where the tee back smacked that sucker. Now, that's typical of this shaped blade. Well done. Thank you. All right, Ryan, you're up. You ready for this? Do me pro. So, Ryan, first off, there's a lot of weight in this blade. That tee back is there to take weight out. But everything's still right and tight. It obviously cut pretty well. Cut two of these canes, kind of just mash that one out of the way. But you can see the cut in there is clean. I like the decorative pieces. You know, this wolf's head here. All in all, she's a cutter. It's definitely sharp. All right, gentlemen, next up, the strength test. It's the bullet test. So let's clear the range and get this set. Now, we've got your blade, Steve, locked into a vise. We're going to fire one round right at that edge. If everything's good, you should split that bullet fine. You ready for this? Yes, sir. OK. Three, two, one, fire. Oh, look at that. Well. You still got an edge there. You can actually see right where the bullet spun down the side of that blade. You see where it caught the tee back on that side? But I think you uh, made a beautiful piece here, and it certainly held up in that test. Thank you, sir. All right, Ryan, you're up. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Three, two, one, fire. All right, Ryan, I don't see any damage at all. That bullet painted your blade pretty good. Didn't touch the, the tee back on this side. Kind of caught a little bit on that side. But all in all, there's zero edge damage there. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. Bladesmiths, these decisions are always tough, but the judges have made one. There can only be one Forged and Fire champion in this arena of competition, and that champion is. Steve, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Ryan, I have to ask you, please surrender your weapon. Forged and Fire champion would have meant the world to me, but you just really have to be on your A game. You know, no matter what it takes, you just got to pull out all the stops. You got to make sure you look at the finer details, and you know, that's what it takes to win this. Steve, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with Ten thousand dollars. Good job. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Steve, your blade was light, well constructed, and it did wonderfully in the tests. And also the fact that's the first time you've done a tee back, it makes it that much more impressive. Well done. I am a Forge and Fire champion. Yay! <laughs> I came here to prove that I can compete with some of the best smiths in the world and beat them. And I did just that. <laughs>